let me introduce you to two particles, yellow and green. Yellow and green are two particles living their particle lives in their own little particle world. But what makes them so special is that these two particles just happen to be the most adorable and cute match ever made in science. They are entangled particles. Particles have certain fundamental properties that define how they are. One of these properties is spin. Particles can only have two types of spin when they're measured. Either they have spin up or they're spin down. Now what does all this have to do with quantum entanglement? Back to yellow and green. Imagine this. Yellow and green were just two particles hanging at a party when they were invited to dance with each other. In the middle of the dance floor, they get together and perform the most amazing and elegant dance ever seen. It was love at first dance, and the particles instantly knew that they were meant to be together. At the end of the dance, they separate, flying into opposite directions. But even though they're apart, they still know that their love will keep them connected. Oh, that's cute. We would see that these two particles are in an entangled state. Basically, when two particles are entangled and you measure the properties of one particle, it has a direct correlation on the properties of the other particle. If the spin of yellow is measured to be up, then the spin of green must be down, as they have to be opposites. Sounds simple enough, right? Well, since it's quantum mechanics, of course it can't be that simple. See, before you measure the property of a particle, it's in this weird thing called a superposition state. Essentially, superposition is when an object is in a probability of being in one state versus another, but we can't tell with absolute certainty what state it's in until we measure it. Upon measuring, the object is forced to pick a state to be in. But before measuring, the object is actually in both states at once. We can't tell for certain if it's this or that. We just know that it's this and that until we measure it, and then it becomes this or that. With entangled particles, both particles are in a superposition of being in either up or down. Once you measure one particle spin, it communicates to the other particle telling it what state it has to be in. But there were some people who didn't think that their love for each other was real. One of these people? being Einstein. So we know that these particles are connected and communicating, but they can be connected at any distance. If we were to give yellow and green each a ticket to outer space and we fly them to the opposite sides of the universe, they would still be able to communicate their properties to each other. It really seems like quantum entanglement disproves the theory that long distance relationships don't work out. Anyway, Einstein was not a fan of this because of the speed at which these particles were communicating at. They would in theory be going faster than the speed of light, which according to Einstein's theory of special relativity, light is the fastest thing in the universe. Einstein thought that instead of these particles being in a superposition and communicating with each other, these particles already had predetermined states. He labeled yellow and green to the relationship Spukhafte Fehrwerklung. All of these arguments were merely hypothetical until the 1960s when this guy named John Bell proposed a the theorem by saying, what if we measure these particles from multiple angles? Oddly enough, the results get scrambled. For example, we take green and measure a certain binary property of them, like whether they prefer rock or classical music, with each result being equally probable, and the results show that green is a classical type of particle. Then we measure another binary property, like whether they prefer dogs or cats, and the results show that green likes dogs. But if we were to take that first measurement again, green is again equally likely to prefer rock or classical music now, despite already being shown to like classical the first time. This proves that superposition states and particles are actually happening. It shows that these particles are actually communicating across these vast distances to each other at a speed faster than light. Because the property, like the spin of one particle depends on that of the other particle. Does that mean we can communicate with each other across the universe at speeds faster than light? Sadly not quite, but love is unpredictable. 